The RX is the best selling model for Lexus. And last year we saw it get a full redesign. But for this year, Lexus has brought us the first plug-in hybrid RX. This is the 450H plus luxury trim. And it gets a 2.5 liter four cylinder plug-in hybrid engine. That gets it about 304 horsepower. It comes with a CVT and zero to 60 in about 5.8 seconds. That's not too bad. Fuel economy is gonna come in with engine only at 35 miles per gallon. Now that is amazing because a lot of these plug-in hybrids, the engine part is usually around mid 20s, but not this one, you get mid 30s on this. So that is amazing. And the electric portion, you're looking at about 83 miles per gallon equivalent. Let's check out the cargo space. Do get a powered lift gate. Right now you're looking at about 30 cubic feet of space. Decent amount of space, looks pretty good. And you do have powered lowering second seats. And what else do we have in here? We've got some tie downs right down here. Look pretty good. Do we have anything underneath here? What kind of space? And we've got space for the charging cable and that's about it. All right, let's watch these second seats go down. Push a button and push of a button and there they drop. And when they are down, you get 46 cubic feet of space. They don't lay completely flat, but they aren't too bad. They do also power back up, hold the button for a second, and they will return to their original position. That is nice. A lot of them go down, but not all of them come back up. Here's another cool feature. You can put the lift gate down by pressing this button, or if you press this one, then it'll lock all the doors when it goes down. On your driver's side is where your gas inlet is. And then if you come around to the other side, you have a J1772 plug. It's going to charge your 18.1 kilowatt hour battery. That's good for 37 miles of electric range. You can charge this with a 240 volt and it's gonna take you about two and a half hours. If you like seeing and learning about these new cars like this Lexus 450H, go down and hit the subscribe button. I put content up every week and that also helps me bring more cars like this one to you. Let's take a look at the interior. As we stated earlier, this does have the luxury package and it is beautiful. So you have a dark brown right here. You've got black underneath here. You do have some Alcantara up here with the Mark Levison stereo system in here. Got a door pocket's got a little bit of room for a bottle or so. And this does have the push button door handles. You can pull them, that's kind of your emergency. So you can pull them this way and that will still let you out, but you just push button and the door opens up. What I noticed is, is inside here, Inside this pocket where you grab to pull the door shut, it's kind of like a rubbery material. It's like your hand just kind of grips and holds onto it. It's really nice. You do have fully powered seats with lumbar and the thigh extension, which is a really nice feature and it makes it really comfortable. It doesn't go out too far, but far enough. I like the light colored interior mixed with the browns and the darks and even some wood grain you can see on the steering wheel and there in the center console. I really think it's put together well. You do have some Alcantara up here on the seats. These are heated and ventilated on this one. Let's get inside and get a better look. Here's another look at the seats right there. Looks like you got a little Alcantara on the sides also, but the rest of this is leather and some perforated leather in the center talked about there is the passenger door and then coming across here this is a soft material right here got a little bit of wood grain look here and more soft up here you get up to this higher piece up here and that is still also very very soft and this is Alcantara running underneath here I like that little step up it's pretty nice 
I don't know if you could put anything up there. It probably would still slide off. Now, this one also gets this awesome display across here with this big screen in the driver's display. It's pretty basic, gives you all the information you need to know. So you've got your charging when you're regen braking, and then you've got eco, and then you've got your power band. Uh, down below when it's in electric mode, it'll tell you how many miles per kilowatt hour you're getting. And then when it goes to engine, it will switch over to miles per gallon. So as an example, there we kicked on the engine. Now you can see that it says we are averaging 91.7 miles per gallon. That seems a little crazy, doesn't it? But when we charge it up every night, all we're driving in is electric. And if we look at the odometer, we can switch it over here. There is our trip A. So we've driven almost 160 miles so far and we're averaging 91.4, oh, sorry, 91.3 <laughs> miles per gallon. Pretty cool. On the left side here, you have your battery power and how much it's charged. On the right side, you have your gas tank and your driver assistance features will also be on the screen. Pan back to the steering wheel. The cool thing about this is it does have a heads up display. Now the heads up display is what controls all of your driver assistance functions. So here on this side, you do turn the cruise on here but as soon as you touch any of this, it activates it up on the heads up display. Well, we're gonna try this and see if I can show you some of these features. So as soon as we touch this, it's going to open everything up. And now you can see what mode you're in. Your, this is gonna be your cruise. And as you go around the steering wheel, it's gonna sense what buttons you are touching. So when you're in cruise control, this button's going to be resume. This one right here is going to be your minus. And that's all on that side. If we go to the left side, same thing on the left side. Over here, you're gonna control your stereo or your phone. And then you press the button and there's your, oh, there's your stereo. Change what you wanna listen to. You got your volume controls right there. So it's pretty cool. And the heads up display is really bright and big and you can see everything really well. It's very easy to get used to using those buttons on here. Now, let's go ahead and look over here. You do have your gas door opener and your tailgate lift. You do have memory seating and then your odometer stuff there. All right, let's work over here to this infotainment screen. Now, this thing is pretty awesome and it contains a lot of information, but as you can see, it does have a glare on it. So you might see if there's some type of a uh, anti-glare cover that you can put on this. So you've got your navigation, you've got your music sources, as in your radio, your phone, uh, your satellite radio. There is your phone connection, so you can make your calls under vehicle. This is what you get, and you can see your current trip information and your history of your miles per gallon or your miles per kilowatt hour. You go into settings, that's where everything else is. Um, you got personal info, your Bluetooth devices, set up your phones. You go into general, just has your normal stuff, date, time, keyboard, setup, that type of thing. Go on down here, you can um, change your display, change the brightness, go on back, let's go look at um, there's your sound and media, so you can adjust the sound and everything on this Mark Levison system so that it sounds the way that you want it to sound. And we go down to, there's your navigation again. You can set up different things inside your navigation. You can show speed limit, traffic signs, that type of thing. What I don't like is every time I go back out, it takes me to the top and I have to scroll all the way back down instead of just going to the next thing. Um, we're gonna go to vehicle customization. So this is where your heads up display is. You can change how that is. You can change um, where it sits in your view line right here and the brightness and all of that, which I like it really bright. And then we can go to the meter 
This is gonna just show you some, a few different things on your screens, your lights. You can change your lights around, um, how quickly and how slowly they turn on and off when uh, vehicles are coming at you. This is your ambient lighting in here, which is kind of nice. We got silky white. I like the sunset, so I'm gonna put it on sunset. And you can do it by zone, so you can set up multiple areas with different colors. Pretty nice. Door control. This will unlock your doors. You can set it to draw unlock the passenger side or all of them for them to unlock when you shift into park. That type of thing. Uh, getting in and out. Seat slide. You want that? I want it on partial. Okay. Seat lift, no, I don't want the seat to lift up for me to get out. But if you are a smaller person and it makes it easier for you to get out or you um, have troubles getting in and out of vehicles, then yes, that is kind of a nice feature. But for me being at six foot, if I get out, I'm gonna hit my head <laughs> on the door frame. And then you, your steering column, you can adjust that. Um, your custom drive modes, you can set that up however you like to drive. Um, charging, you can adjust uh, the charging. You can turn on and off the battery cooling, battery warming, uh, that type of thing. You can set it to a lower current if you would like to. There's your tire pressure, steering switch, climate control. Basically for your remote start, set that stuff up. And then your utility, you can turn on that 1500 watt outlet. And then we're gonna go on down and this is, you also have your driver's assist. So, the cool thing I found out about this driver assist system is, you go to driver support, you've got traffic jam, you've got driver monitor. You go on down here and you have steering assist, deceleration assist, this is all good stuff that really kind of help you out. But, you get down here too, you've got acceleration, you can actually ex have the cruise control accelerate quickly and slow down slowly or quickly. Now, here is one thing that I do not like. Um, it's actually good that they have this here. This one is equipped with the eye tracker and it's very sensitive eye tracker, but Lexus, Ford, pay attention here. Lexus gives you a button to shut the eye tracker off. Now, Lexus system is not hands-free driving like Ford's is or Chevy's is. But one thing that's different is with Ford's Blue Cruise and Chevy's Super Cruise, the eye tracker's on all the time, whether you are on a Blue Cruise road or not. If you are just on a regular highway, not using Blue Cruise, but you're using your lane centering, even if you gotta have your hands on the steering wheel, they are still using the eye tracker and it's still annoying. So at least Lexus says, you gotta have your hands on the wheel. We got an eye tracker in here for future things that might come later on. But right now we're gonna give you a button to shut that off. Which makes sense. If you're doing lane centering and you have to have your hands on the wheel, there is no reason for you to have to have an eye tracker on. If you're going hands-free, yes, eye tracker, I get it. But if you gotta have your hands on the wheel, no eye tracker. Good job, Lexus. You do have collision mitigation, so you've got cl front cross traffic alert, rear cross traffic alert, and then you've got notifications for excessive speed, things like that, and you can set these at different levels. So that way it's not telling you all the time that you're speeding or whatever the case may be. Okay, let's move on back now. Your climate control buttons are all across this bottom and they are always here. Now they are touch buttons, but they're always on. This is also equipped with the auto function. So it will heat and cool the seats depending on your body temperature, which is really nice. You have a steering wheel warmer, which is the same way you set it to auto. It's awesome. Going across here, you do have front or rear controls. You've got your sink and the passenger also has heated and cooled 
seats that do automatic also. I like these little dials. They just look nice with the numbers and the colors there. This is really nice. The appearance just looks great. Uh, you do have your front defrost here and your rear and your mirror heater right there. All right, down here you have parking assist. So I, ne I am always afraid of trying these because I don't wanna hurt the car <laughs> or anyone else's car. So I don't know if I will ever do it or ever trust it enough to do it, but you do have that available. Uh, now you've got your camera view. So this is kind of a 360 spin of what is around you. So there is your reverse camera. Now what I like about this is that it shows this car and if anything is out here around you, it will actually show that to you also. Uh, my dog was running around the last time I was in here and I could see him so I could make sure that I didn't hit him. Uh, it's a pretty cool function. Move on down, and you do have your vents right here. These are kind of nice. They kind of just swing up and down. It's pretty cool. Um, it feels pretty good. Over here, you do have USB um, Cs. You get two of them, which is really nice. And then you can slide this piece back underneath here. You have another USB C and a USB A. So that's three USB Cs all together right there, which is pretty cool. Also a phone charger down in here and then just a small little cubby down there to keep any other things that you'd like to have. Move back, you got two cup holders, which are nice. And this is one of those that has the rising cup holder. See if I can see it pop up, which is really nice. We'll push that down again. Yeah, push the button and there it comes. Awesome, I love that feature. So if you have a taller bottle, you can put that down in there and it's not affecting your area anywhere. This is the uh, new Toyota and Lexus gear shifter. It's pretty easy to figure out. You're in park, you have to push it over and then up to go into reverse. Now, if you're in park and you go to neutral, you press it over and that gets you into neutral. So now you're in neutral. Now, if you press over and down, that puts you in drive. It's pretty simple. It's really not that hard to figure out. And then if you want to do manual shifting, you just pull back like that and you have, are in manual. So park is just a push of a button. All right, on back, you do have your traction control button. Um, you do have, it looks like an off-road button. Here, you can switch it between electric or hybrid. So you can hold that down, it'll turn the engine on, and then you can just drive in hybrid. And then you also have an auto EV or hybrid. So it will choose and make that decision for you. That's pretty cool. And then you have a parking brake. All right, here is your center console. Uh, decent size, um, really good arm space. Feels really good, nice leather. Now this is one of those cool ones that you can press the button on the side and it flips up this way. You look inside there, it's not hugely deep, but it's got a decent amount of room in there. So that's not too bad. But here's the cool thing about this one, you can close that and then you, there's a button on the passenger side. If they need something, then they can just flip it up this direction. And easy access. Love that center console. That is awesome. Way to go Toyota and Lexus. This does also come this does also come with the panoramic roof, and it's really nice. It does have a good sunshade that you can close on hot, sunny days. Now it's time for me to hop in the back and see how I fit back there. It looks pretty decent, but we better check it. Let's see how much space there is back here. I am six foot. Seat is in my driving position, and I have about three inches or so, somewhere in there, of space here now. That's plenty of room. These seats also do recline, so you can recline those back, and they go back pretty far, not too bad. That's the headspace in here. My headspace is about one and a half inches, somewhere in there. Um, if you didn't have a panoramic roof, you'd probably have a little bit more room up here, but the space is pretty good. So why don't you guys come inside and take a look at everything that's going on back here. 
All right, the back door looks similar to the front. This is a little bit harder up here. Do still have Alcantara around the Mark Levison speaker. Do have a little bit of white, kind of hard leathery material here, but then you do have the brown soft right down here. It's just pretty good. And you do have room for a bottle in here. Now, as I mentioned earlier, here is that switch for the reclining seats and they do recline a decent amount. In the back, you do have your own climate control, which is pretty cool. So you've got heated and ventilated seats, and then you also have USB-Cs on both sides. You can, if you need to, move the front seat. You can tilt this up, and you can actually move this seat forward. It's just a lovely interior. It is amazing. There's kind of a look up the front again. And before we get out, we do have a center armrest here. And in here, you got a little storage spot right there. And then you have your two cup holders. Nice. Well, you've seen the outside and now you've seen the inside of this 450H luxury. And it is nice in here. It's amazing. I really do like it. Um, but let's go take it for a drive and see how it handles. Let's talk a little bit about pricing. The base 350H starts at $52,100. The 450H plus luxury, like this one, starts at $70,580. And our tester here, with all of its options and the destination fee, is going to come in at $78,355. We've been driving this for just a couple days and it does really feel great. And the electric range on this is awesome. I think like I showed earlier that we are averaging like over 90 miles per gallon because we're charging it up every night and we're using those 37 miles of electric. A lot of times that's getting us where we need to go and back or partially back. So that has been great. Um, I'm impressed with the acceleration, even just in electric mode. It has a, a good pickup, and, but we're gonna get out here and we're gonna do a quick zero to 60 so that we can kind of feel what the engine feels like along with that uh, electric assist and see how, if it's loud, if it sounds good, you know, what is going on there. Here we go, a little bit of torque. Ready, one, two, three, go. Whoa, that was actually really good. 60. It said 5.8 seconds. I bet it was every bit of that. And it did give me that punch and take off of the line. That was awesome. Really, really good. Um, it is that CVT, so you do have that high rev uh, to it, but it wasn't too bad. Um, there are some that sound good, some that don't sound so good. This one actually wasn't wasn't bad. I actually liked it. The handling and the driving dynamics of this is really, really good. It's really sharp, move, maneuvering around. Um, I haven't had any problems with the suspension. It actually feels really good. It's a Lexus nice, soft suspension. Now, this isn't anything uh, fancy it doesn't it's not the F sport or anything crazy like that so it doesn't have any like big brakes and stuff like that but this just feels nice I really do love the interior the way it's set up and the colors especially so let me know down in the comments what you guys think about this interior because some people you know like wood grain some don't um, some like the light and the dark and some don't so let me know what you guys think the infotainment screen is great. It's got a lot of good information and I love having all my climate control buttons down across the bottom. No, they're not physical buttons, but they're all there. I don't have to hunt around all over the place trying to find my buttons that I want to turn on. So that's a plus. Uh, the hybrid system seems to be working really well. I don't generally even notice whenever the engine has turned on. I usually have to look down and check to make sure that it is on. Uh, so that is a really good. The Mark and Levinson stereo system sounds really good in here. And the other thing is, is having a sunshade in here is really nice. Uh, it blocks out that sun so you can 
enjoy your day without feeling like your sun beating down on you and sweating in here. Now the cooled seats are awesome. They do make it feel really good in here and the air conditioning system and the ventilation is really good. I like the vents and everything. So it, it, it's just it's just really good. I, I don't I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> the only thing that hurts is that price tag. So that would be the only thing that would deter me from purchasing this over something else, just because it does have a relatively high price tag to start, uh, but you get what you pay for also. If you guys haven't subscribed yet, go down and hit the subscribe button and then click on one of these videos up here. One of them is one that I think you're gonna like and the other one is one YouTube thinks you're going to like. So I think you're gonna like them both, but you know, it's my content. So, <laughs> all right guys, I will see you in the next one.